In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. My good and loving Father, please allow me the privilege of saying my yes to you. I say yes to you, Father, in all things, not a conditional yes that involves doing only those things that are comfortable or easy, not a conditional yes that means doing only those things that benefit me. No, I give you my yes in all things, Father, because I know you are pure love, and as pure love, you can transform all things. Doing your will can never hurt me. Doing your will can never harm another. Doing your will can never separate me from you. Doing your will can only bring about the rhythm and harmony of your will here on earth. Doing your will can only spread your light and love. Doing your will can only help bring me to you. Doing your will can only help me bring others to you. When I step inside your will, I am dancing with you in order, rhythm, and harmony of your divine will. When I step outside your will, I am stumbling alone in the chaos, disorder, and discord of darkness. Let me listen to your gentle, loving voice, beckoning me, inviting me into your divine will. I am yours, Lord. Do with me what you will, because I know that your will is love. Even when your will may seem painful or unfair, I know that your ways are not always man's ways. Only you can see the grand scheme of things. Only you know the whys of my crosses. But despite what may sometimes appear to be unjust, I trust you totally. Why? Because you are my father and you love me. You want only what is good for me. You want me to come home to you. There's nothing in heaven or on earth that I want more. So I say yes, Father. I say yes to you. I say yes to the rhythm and harmony of your divine will. Amen. Meditate on what it means to give your fiat, your yes, to God our Father. How will this change your life? How will this change your relationship with God? with others. Dearest Father, my Creator and my God, you promised that in every place where we honor your name, you would come to us and bless us. O oh, Father, arise and come to rest in us, your children. Clothe us in your salvation and let us rejoice in your goodness. Please do not turn away our faces from your loving presence. If we have found favor in your sight, show us your face, so that we may know you and find grace before your eyes. Please speak to us now as you spoke to Moses, as a man speaks to his friend. Let it be known this day that you are the Father of all mankind, who can turn all hearts back to yourself, and that we are your children who desire only to do your will in all things. Answer us, Lord. Answer us so all your children may know that you are mankind's one true God and Father. As your prodigal children, we want only to return home to you. As we approach you, Father, please run to meet us, and in your unconditional love and compassion, embrace and kiss us. Like Mary, your handmaid, and Jesus, your son, we love you, Father, and we give ourselves to you. Following those you sent to bring us back home, we now freely consecrate ourselves to you, saying, With Mary, our mother, be it done to me according to your will. Through Jesus, our God and Savior, not as I will, but as you will. In the Holy Spirit, our God and Sanctifier, Abba, Father. Jesus promised when two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the midst of us. So as Jesus is in you, and you in Jesus, and Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches, be with us now, 
and through your Holy Spirit dwell in us always as your living temples. Bless us, Father, and walk among us, your children, and may your glory descend upon us as the transforming fire of your tender love and mercy, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearest God our Father, I humbly ask that on my journey home to you, your holy angels protect and guide me, that your blessed saints in heaven intercede for me, and that your suffering souls in purgatory pray for me, as I pray for them now. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus, my God and my Savior, you loved me so much. You died for me on the cross so that I too could return to our Father in heaven. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Through your Holy Eucharist, please sustain me and be present with me always on my journey home. Amen. Holy Spirit, my God and my Sanctifier, Jesus sent you to me for my journey back home to the Father. Please purify and refine me, fill me with your divine light and love, so that the presence of God may dwell in me. Amen. The first major octave is the disobedience and exile of God our Father's children. Let us meditate on Adam and Eve's choice not to do God our Father's will, their exile from the paradise he created for them, and our Father's promise that the woman, Mary, would someday triumph by crushing the head of the serpent that seduced them into disobedience. God our Father was with us at the beginning in paradise he created for us, the paradise of his divine will. Seduced by Satan, Adam and Eve chose not to do the will of God, and were therefore expelled from this paradise, and denied God's intimate presence. However, our Father promised that the woman would ultimately defeat the evil that had caused this separation, the evil of saying no to God's will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. The second major octave is the presence of God our Father in the Old Testament era. Let us meditate on God our Father's presence among us during the Old Testament era. Although God's children were expelled from paradise by their choice not to do God's will, God never abandoned them. He was present with them from the beginning. In Old Testament times, He manifested His presence through His own voice. The words of His prophets in the burning bush, in a pillar of smoke, and in the Ark of the Covenant. After God rescued his children from the bondage of Egypt, he requested that they celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for eight days each year. He wanted them to remember that he loved them, he saved them, and he was present with them. Later, when God was present in the Ark of the Covenant, Solomon built a magnificent temple to house it. He then celebrated an eight-day feast of dedication in preparation for God's presence in the temple. And God responded by manifesting His presence in a tangible and powerful way. At the close of the Old Testament, the Maccabees reinstituted the eight-day feast to purify and rededicate the temple that had been defiled through pagan influence. 
so the presence of God would dwell with them once more. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. The third major octave is the Fiat of Mary, our Mother. Let us meditate on Mary's triumphant Fiat, her yes to God's will, and how she became the new Ark, a living tabernacle, for the newly manifested presence of God, Jesus, the second person of the Holy Trinity, Savior of God our Father's children. Mary gave her yes when the angel Gabriel came to her and asked her to be the mother of the Son of God. The Holy Spirit came upon her, and the power of God our Father overshadowed her. In saying yes to God's will, Mary, the woman, allowed God to be present with his children in a new way. She actually became the new ark, a living tabernacle of Jesus, the second person of the Holy Trinity, mankind's savior, who, with his mother's cooperation, would restore the exiled children of God to their father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. The fourth major octave is the fiat of Jesus our Savior, Son of God and second person of the Holy Trinity. Let us meditate on Jesus' fiat, his yes to God's will, and how God our Father sent Jesus to save us and to bring us back home to him. Jesus offered his fiat to God our Father during his passion in the Garden of Gethsemane. My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Through his passion, death, and resurrection, Jesus redeemed us, defeating the sin, saying no to God's will, and death, separation and exile from God, which Satan introduced into the world. Through Jesus, his church, and his sacraments, we can now return to God our Father and have eternal life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, 
I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. The fifth major octave is the sending of the Holy Spirit, our sanctifier, Spirit of God, and the third person of the Holy Trinity. Let us meditate on how Jesus, after completing his mission for God our Father, asked him to send the Holy Spirit a newly revealed manifestation of God, the third person of the Holy Trinity. The Holy Spirit was sent to lead us on our journey back home to our Father, and to purify and refine us so that we could become living tabernacles of the indwelling presence of God. Before ascending to his Father, Jesus promised that he would not leave us orphans. He asked God our Father to send the Holy Spirit. In doing this, God could again be present with us in a new way. It was now possible for God not only to be with us in the Old Testament times, but in us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. The sixth major octave is the choice of God's prodigal children to return to their father. Let us meditate on how we are all prodigal children of God our Father, and how He has provided every one of us with the opportunity to make a free will choice to return to Him. As prodigal children of God our Father, we are given the opportunity, individually and collectively, to make a sincere free will decision to return to our Father's house. This means deciding to turn away from our own will, our own sinfulness, our own worldliness, and convert or turn back towards the presence of God our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. The seventh major octave is the fiat of God our Father's children, individually and as the body of Christ. Let us meditate on how in consecrating ourselves to God our Father and saying yes unconditionally to His will, we find our way home to Him. We become living tabernacles of the indwelling presence of God. In giving our yes to God our Father, in agreeing to do His will in all things, in giving ourselves completely to Him, He comes to dwell in us and we dwell in Him. We are home with our Father we become temples of a living God. In a sense, heaven and earth are joined. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. The eighth major octave is the coming of the new Jerusalem. Let us meditate on the eventual conclusion of our salvation history. The new Jerusalem promised in the book of Revelation, when heaven and earth will be transformed, when mankind will finally be fully restored to God our Father, and when God will manifest His presence and dwell with His children forever in a new way. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And he who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without price from the fountain of the water of life. He who conquers shall have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In praise, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In thanksgiving, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In offering, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In repentance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In my inheritance, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In saying my yes, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In fidelity, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. In consecration, I love you, Father, and I give myself to you. My dearest Father, Please accept this offering of myself, my body, mind, and soul. I praise you for your creation, all your works and wonders. I thank you for giving me life and for all that you have done for me. I offer up to you all that you have so generously given me. I am sincerely sorry for not knowing, loving, serving, and honoring you as I should. I embrace my inheritance as your child, both the joy and responsibilities. I give you my yes so that I may be an instrument of your will. I pledge my fidelity and I ask for the grace of steadfastness and perseverance in my faith. Most loving, caring, and merciful of fathers, in your divine presence, I sincerely proclaim my love for you. I give myself and my family to you, and I solemnly consecrate myself and my family to you, now and forever. Dearest Father, as your child I ask that you send Mary to guide me to Jesus, and that Jesus sends me to the Holy Spirit so that they may all bring me to you, that you dwell with me and in me, a living temple prepared by Mary 
dedicated by Jesus and purified by your Holy Spirit. And may I always be with you and in you that you may permit me as your child to be your true and intimate friend, one who loves you above all things, and that you come for me when I die to bring me home to you. I further ask you, Father, for the sake of all mankind, to have mercy on all your children, past, present, and future, to bring peace to the world, and to gather all your children to yourself, and that your kingdom comes and your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. God, our Father, saved eight people on Noah's Ark. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God, our Father, decreed that all male babies be circumcised on the eighth day as a sign of his covenant with us. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God, our Father, manifested himself to Moses and his children after they completed an eight-day period of consecration and offering to him. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God, our Father, instituted the eight-day Feast of Tabernacles to remind his children that he was with them, loved them, and brought them out of the bondage of Egypt. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God, our Father, accepted purification offerings from his children on the final eighth day of the ritual cleansing. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God, our Father, was glorified when David, the eighth son of Jesse, brought the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David, amidst praises sung from an octave upon harps. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father heard David's repentant cry, played on an eight-stringed harp. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father was glorified when Solomon completed the house of the Lord in the eighth month of the year. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father filled the temple with his majesty and came to dwell with his children on the eighth day of Solomon's feast of the dedication. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. The presence of God our Father was to be approached by eight steps in the new temple envisioned by his prophet Ezekiel. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father was glorified when his defiled temple was purified and rededicated by the Maccabees during the eight-day feast of the dedication. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father made a new covenant with his children through Jesus, his Son, who was circumcised on the eighth day. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father revealed his Son Jesus during the transfiguration eight days after Jesus fed the multitudes. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father was glorified when, from Solomon's porch in the temple, on the eight-day feast of the dedication, his son Jesus revealed that he was consecrated to God our Father, and that he and the Father were one. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father was glorified after his son Jesus rose from the dead on the eighth day of his week of passion and redemption for our sins. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. God our Father was glorified when Jesus showed his wounds to unbelieving Thomas eight days after his resurrection. Have mercy on us, O loving Father. Dearest God our Father, let us know, love, and honor you through eight days of purification and dedication, as you willed it throughout our salvation history. And may the holy octave of consecration to God our Father and its eighth solemn day, the feast of the Father of all mankind, serve to bring all your children back home to you. May this be granted through your love and the love of Jesus, our God and Savior the Holy Spirit, our God and Sanctifier, and Mary, our Mother. Amen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.